Hi there again and welcome to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you for keeping it here and for joining us every Saturday for your favorite show. This is a show where we connect, we influence, we impact, but more than ever, we connect you directly to women you need to know. Today there's one particular person and she is called Irene Candy. Many of you know her as Mama Yao. Now, Mama Yao is here with us today. If you have any questions for her, please head over to our social Sasa EV right now. If you want to know what she's been doing since her Sonu days, she was the first female deputy president of the University of Nairobi. Sonu. So if you have any questions regarding what <coughs> Irene has been up to, my God, she is an exciting person. She has an amazing story. I think you need to keep it here. Uh, uh, remember, we are available across uh, all socials at KTN Home. You can also hit me up directly at Quintambori. You can head, head on to my fan page. It's Quintambori on Facebook. And I will be able to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, Irene Candy, just briefly about her is that she's a youth <coughs> and gender expert. She's also a political strategist. She's mental health and uh, advocates. Of course, she's also an em girl child empowerment enthusiast. She's also very, very passionate about educating the girl child. She has a foundation called Mamari Foundation, and she'll be able to tell us more about it. Let's not waste time. Irene has a story that stretches from here to Timbuktu. She also is an author. There's one thing that I've realized on this show, that most of the women that we are interviewing they have documented their stories. How amazing is that? And today we have uh, the author of Carving of a Firebrand. Maybe that is something that we need to think about as women. We need to be, document our stories. Let's have uh, everything that we are doing. Let's shout about our achievement, not just on our social media platforms, but let's keep it somewhere for, to inspire the future generation. Irene Kendi. Yes, Mama Yao. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are you, Mami? Good to see you. Good to see you too, Peter. Looking lovely as usual. Thank you. Eh? Yeah. How are you? I'm good, good. Eh? Yeah. That's a transia wapi. Where do we start this interview from? <laughs> hmm? Wherever you want. Wherever I want. Yeah. Tell me about, uh, let's talk about uh, three things that people will be surprised to find about you. Uh, one. Mm. I'm a very charismatic and bold girl. They will not be surprised about your charisma. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be surprised to yeah. learn that I'm very spiritual. Oh. Not oh. many know, but mm. I'm highly spiritual. Mm. Because every morning I wake up and see where I've come from, I connect with the high source, and that is God. So I'm very spiritual. I give everything that I have, I owe God. And I'm also very empathetic. See, I'm, people think out here, I'm very combative, I'm very rough. It's a public space as a woman, mm -hmm. you got to have some cuts. Mm -hmm. But I'm very empathetic. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very loving person. Many know, many judge, others don't know, but I know I'm a very loving person. And I'm a very responsible mother and girlfriend. Mm. Yeah. I can attest to that. <laughs> if you want to know more about it, you better follow, follow me on social media. You can... We'll keep you updated. <coughs> no, one thing about uh, Irene, did I leave out anything about your introduction? Is there anything I left out in terms of the things that you do mm. before we move on? No, you have not left. Uh, you have not le the only thing you have left yeah. is that uh, I have become so philanthropic. You are a philanthropist. I have, become, I have no, I don't have much, mm. but uh, whatever little I have, mm. I feel I have, a fee, I have a calling of giving, whether in material things, or uh, emotional needs, yeah. um, I've, I've developed or I've known uh, I'm a philanthropist to the, to the society. Good stuff. And I'm also a trade unionist. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was at, uh, Brother Francis Atuli's uh, advice on political, youth education, and women affairs for two years. Really? And uh, on that note, I think I also left the fact that you also served... Uh, you also worked with the outgoing cabinet secretary, Professor Margaret Prof Kobe, Prof yeah, Kobe, as her personal assistant yeah. and advisor on political and youth affairs. Mm. Yeah. Mama Wangov Sana. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. Yeah. She, she's a trailblazer. Trailblazer. Mm. Good stuff. Let me ask you something, uh, Irene. Uh, you come from Meru County. Yes. 
there's a there's a lot of politics going on going on currently yeah. in that part of the country regarding your governor mm -hmm. who is among the seven elected female governors in the in the August 9th election. Mm -hmm. We were very excited mm -hmm. about the fact that this was a special election and we were able to elevate more leaders into you know, the influential position. But a few days down the line, uh, the residents, or rather, there's a man from Meru County who feels like Kawira Mangaza is not fit to serve as the governor of Meru County. What are your thoughts regarding that? Mm. What measurements has he used to know that she is not fit to serve the Meru County? She is fit and equal to the task. Yeah. If she was not fit, she could not have been elected. Mm. She is an elected woman, and she is elected on an independent. Uh, she's an, she was an independent candidate. candidate yeah. You know, Paul, I've been in politics and still indirectly. Mm -hmm. In politics, you'll always have dark forces, especially dark forces that didn't believe in you. You saw the men that Kawira trampled on, yeah. the likes of Kina Kiraito, yeah. Kina Haonarabumi Pika Linturi, yeah. you know, yeah. Kina Munya. No, Munya was not contesting. Mm -hmm. You see, as a woman, especially in Meru, there's never been a woman elected in any position. Apart from one Kawi Karimi Bogori, <coughs> late 1970s, and she had taken after the father died. Yeah. And she served for like two, three months, she never survived as an MP. You saw Igoki, who was almost slaughtered just by announcing she wanted to buy for an MP. So Kawira made it. Mm -hmm. Because she was she surprised me. So men are still rising to bring her down. But me I'll tell Kawira to keep it fair. Do the right thing. Fight. In this world, as a woman, you must learn how to fight. And God will vindicate her. It is God who knows the truth in this matter. But I know Kawira will come out strong. Because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I wish Kawira all the best. I wish Kawira all the best. Mm -hmm. Just give that woman a chance and see what she can do. That's mm -hmm. what I will say. During your Sonu days, or as you were campaigning to become the first deputy president, the first female ever to be elected in that position since, since 1970. Eh. Goals. Did you ever encounter that kind of resistance? And how did you uh, overcome that? As a woman, yes. in Kenya and Africa, large, and in the world, yes. men will always ri rise against you. Yes. Not all men. 90% yes. of my supporters actually were men in the university. But there are some crazy... There are some, some, some crazy animals that come from nowhere. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because also I, what I tell women in politics, mm -hmm. or wherever space you are, people who come to subdue you, people who come to intimidate you, have nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the insecurities. Mm -hmm. Don't give them power to intimidate you. Don't give them power to suppress you. Rise just like an eagle above the storms. And that's what I did. And by God's grace, in politics as a woman, you need a lot of emotional intelligence and a lot of courage and a lot of wisdom because we'll encounter people who love you so much. Yeah. You'll meet others that see you like a sister of the devil himself and they will want even to kill you. Again, when God has called you for a purpose, he shall give you the grace. And I think when, he was, when I was in Sonu, God had given me the, the grace. And comrades loved me so much because I, I came in the university with my baby, my son. That's why they called me Mama Yao. Yao. I and, was going to ask you, where did the name come yeah, from? Yeah. I came to the university with my son who was mm. barely two and a half years old. Today is a candidate. He's sitting for his KCP in two weeks' time. And right I, from first year? From first year, yes. And after high school, mm. I stayed in the market for six years. Mm. Remember my mom. If you read my book, you'll see where my mom taught me business at the age of seven years. At 24, I'd already made my first million. Mm. 24 years. You will see I've worked so hard in life. So I have a history of being in the public space. Because even in the market, I would speak for market women. Right from nursery, I was a prefect. In high school, I was a, pre a games where captain. Did you, where did you go to high school? Kangeta Girls Secondary School mm -hmm. and Mawa Primary School. Mm -hmm. In Mawa Primary School, I was a prefect from class one to class eight. And I always talked in my class. And I think God has blessed me with a personality that fits with everyone. I'm very sociable. I'm very kind. So everywhere I go, I talk to people. Even when I was in distress, I'll talk to you. So when I came to the university, I never knew I would be a Linda. I didn't know about university politics. I started a program called Chanua Winzitu. Mm. When I was barely in first year, 
two weeks old in the oh, university. The inspiration? My inspiration was when I was with my baby, she would, would see the ladies and everyone was like, ah, what? You are coming to class with your baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. And other girls were hiding their babies. Others were pregnant and they were hiding their pregnancy. So I broke that thing. That as a woman, mm -hmm. having a baby, mm -hmm. it is a proof of fertility. <laughs> Why would you be ashamed of your own fruit? Yes. So I told the girls, don't. And I used to give them my story of where I've come from. Because I was old. I came to the university at, in 2011. In I was 24 years old. Mm -hmm. And the girls who were coming and boys were like 19, 18. Yeah, yeah, 18. And so, and I was so, I was so mature. Yeah. I was so mature. Mm -hmm. So you could see everyone coming to me after class. Jen is so handsome. <laughs> Someone would come to my son, hi, hi, hi. And I made so many friends out of it. And I started encouraging the girls and started encouraging my classmates. Zileza, it doesn't matter. Me, I stayed home for six years. I'm paying my own school fees. I'm with my baby. Nothing has stopped me. So I think they started liking me. Yeah. Now, a scenario came. You see, God, when God is preparing you, mm -hmm. something must happen. Yeah. A scenario came. I came in as a Modi 2 student, a parallel student. Yeah. And the Modi 1 students were getting the ideas right in Kiku campus. I was in Kiku campus. But as Modi 2s, we have to go to main campus to pick our. Thank so you. that hit my mind. Why should we be discriminated? <laughs> Yet we are the people paying so much school fees. Mm -hmm. And I told, I told my, uh, uh, during a common class yeah. at MPH, yeah. I stood at the stage. Now I'm very confident. I stood in the stage. I was not as beautiful I am. I'm straight from the market. I'm But the confidence, <laughs> the confidence was out of this world. So I cut to walk ta 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 to the stage. With your tumba hills. Yes, it's a two fifty up at and nakat nakatu and two suits. Unajua pia. Honorable uh, uh, and really empowered me when I was still in the market. He had appointed me as a member of the board. Yeah. So I came with him. That day I was in those suits. Mm. Ta, 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 ta. Comrades, if you don't have your ID, remain seated. And they, were, they remained seated of a thousand students. Yeah. Oh, I realized this is power. So people can listen to me. Yeah. And I realized truly in leadership, it's not about your looks, it's not about your history. It has totally nothing to do with where you have come from. It has everything to do with you and what you want to achieve for yourself and others. Yeah. So they listened and told them, let us march to the dean office. By then the dean was Genevieve Wanchala. Mm -hmm. Doctor, she's a professor, I think, Professor mm -hmm. Genevieve Wanchala. Yeah. Told them, let us march across. We went, Aki yetu. You know, I used to do this in the market. Kanjoa kitu haras, nandua mama kataeni. <laughs> the market women. And you know me, I was learned. From four leave, I was learned yeah. in the market. So, yeah. can you come and tell, which loss? Mm. Which loss says this? Yeah. Which memo did you write? Today, you are coming to ask her for 40 bob uh, as opposed to 20 bob. Which loss says this? Which policy? I knew about even policies. I knew about laws. You know, I, I was a bright girl. Yeah. So, I would shut them up. And women were like, Kendi Amesema. So, we went to across the dean's office. The dean's office. Uh -huh. We said, I knew Comrade's power, we were barely two weeks, mm -hmm. so the, we said, Dean, we need our IDs today or now. We yeah, are very bold. And let me shock you. Tomorrow, the following day, at midday, our IDs were in Kiku campus. I stood on Kaseme New Day with Mamaya. That's why they called me Mamaya. Because I'm Mama too. And also, I was so protective of the girls. I have a history in my book. If you read, I have a history of attempted uh, rape, mm -hmm. abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. Even when I came to university, I was in a very abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. My dad had neglect, had chased my mother because we were girls only. Yeah. So that history shaped me, shaped my personality, shaped the iron that. I was. So I used to protect girls so much. Uh, you know, when in the university, my fresh Kikuja, Kuna, the senior students, gold rush. They want to have a bite of these girls. So I would talk to my fellow first years and all first years that came. I was like, don't allow it. You see, I have a baby in school. The father to this baby is somewhere enjoying another woman. I'm the one who is struggling. Don't put yourself in pain. And I tell them, I got out of this and I know I'll come out stronger. And I think God had my wants. And Comrade started calling me mom. The Jan was calling me mom. Mm. So the senior students were like, don't talk with the first year women. Wakona mama yao. 
Huyo mama yao atawapata hapa. So they started calling me mama yao. And that is how now the Monica mama yao came in place up to be. But they have called it to Mamre. Mamre, they, they oh. slow. Because every woman is calling themselves mama, mama yao. Right and they have fought now. for nothing. Yeah. You see me, I fought for comrades. Yeah. I fought for girls. I fought for everyone. Despite what I didn't care. So that's what coined my name. Mama yao. So because everyone is calling them mama yao here, mwanamke anatoka tu kwa siasa anajiita mama yao, hata maji uchachotea your neighbor shosho and they were like ah, mamre. So now they call me mamre, the slang of mama, mama yao. yao. Mm. And mamre now give birth to mamre, mamre foundation. foundation. Yes. Well said. Yeah. You talk very passionately about this marketplace. Mm. Did it did it be, how did it build you? How did you end up at the marketplace? It's a very interesting story, Quint. <laughs> we have you a few see, minutes, yes. There's a, there a blessing, there's what you call blessing in these guys. Yeah. When my father chased my mom because she could not give back to boys. How many are we, you? Were, we were four girls. Mm. Then my mom got remarried again and gave back to two boys. Mm. You know, Mambia Mungu ni mengi. So, we were tomboys. You know, we are alone in, a, in town, Mawa town. Where Mira comes from, up until your mom the renting number. And boys would terrorize us. We are so cute. My sisters are so beautiful. <laughs> so boys would stop us, wanna to hurt us. So we would go home and cry to my mother. My mother is like, I'm busy looking for money to feed you people mm -hmm. and to pay rent. Also, she was broken. My mother would terrorize us and she says, fight for yourself. So sisters would come to our place, would come to your place, my friend, and beat you to a pulp, the four of us. So those parents would come home. Now they are the ones to report. You are not the ones to report. My mom said, I don't want this trouble. We are in trouble with everyone. The Lord, Lord, avocado, mapera, zimemea, sisi ndio tunachuku. Uwa to tomboys. You know, we grew up without our father. We don't have brothers. So we are doing things the way boys are boys doing. doing yeah, to survive. So my mother said from today, mm -hmm. after school, come to the market. Because she was in the market. Mm -hmm. They would tell your baby, ukitoka shule, come to my office yeah. at Standard Media. Yeah. So me, I used to go to the market. And I tell people, if my mother was a doctor, I would be the best doctor today. If my mother was a media personality like you, Quinta, mm -hmm. I would be the best, best media person in the world. Mm -hmm. But my mother was a business woman. She was a mama mboga. Mm -hmm. So I would join her in the market at the age of seven from class one. I enter soko. I'm the only one who went to the market. My sisters were uh, our taki omaneno. Mm -hmm. So I would go ni tengeneza viazi zake, zile vitu anauza, and I had a wheelbarrow. My mm -hmm. mother would put in a when I see people fighting the wheelbarrow narrative, mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel like puking. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm a product of a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. I'm not campaigning, campaigns are over, mm -hmm. but that wheelbarrow people demean. Mm -hmm. It is a powerful tool. My mother would put potatoes, carrots, vitungu, kutu tunjuala, and I would push the wheelbarrow. Nanda na uza na rumi na pe? So I created a good rapport when I was too young. In other words, I was brought up in a public space. And I think that was a shape to my future. I'm a very good mobilizer. So, and I'm a very good market. I would meet people like, you know, I don't want potatoes. You see the, the, the whole car, whatever. So I, I became so prominent in business. Until when I was around 12 years, my mom, I had already grown in business. My mom would go to, to, to outsource for stuff in the market and leave me to sell the small ones. And that's all now, I became so prominent in business. And even in high school and primary school, yeah. I would go to school into the market on market days, on holidays. I used to make my own pocket money. I would buy my own clothes. I would buy things. I had money anyway. Mm -hmm. And after high school, because I could not go to university, we were very poor. Mm -hmm. I could not kill myself. And those days, there were no funds like Uwezo Fad, Nkaf, all these kind of hustler fad. If those things were, if that money was there, I would mm -hmm. be a multi-millionaire overnight. Right, yeah. Because also, I grew in the market. We are customers related with me. Mm -hmm. So all my customers from childhood to Aldo to do mine. So after form four, mm -hmm. I started my own business. I didn't have a capital. In this country, young people are failing yeah. because they feel, I don't have a capital. I don't have connections. I saw before God. I made money without a capital. There's a Mzee that I revere even today. I go to visit him. I used to go to him, take potatoes from him, two bucks. You know in business, you must look for clients. Nikimbia kwa maoteli, nikimbia uko inje and get customers. And I think that built my confidence and my interpersonal skills. Because when it comes to interpersonal skills, I'm so good in it. That is what people say. But I also know. So in the market... After form four, ni kanza biashara yangu. One month, I had my own capital. Because unachukua viazi, unauza, unauza jona brudishia mdozi pe, okay. na hata, hata kama ujauza, hata kwa mdiyo bring when you. Yeah, I so. tell people you must be trustful. You must be trustworthy. 
you must, people can, are you reliable? Mm -hmm. you, two things I've learned in life that have shaped me. Being trustworthy and being reliable. I was so reliable because no single day my customer looked for me or Kanikosa. Even if I'm not in the market that day, your stuff will be delivered. You are, everything will be delivered. And this music trusted me. By the time one month was over, I'd made like 20,000 so I could buy my own stock. And that's why I rose. From then, Kapata Job is CK. If you read my Facebook today, I've, I'm sharing snippets of my book. Actually, that is the story I've talked about today. today yeah. One day I was in the market and I tell women, don't be ashamed of saying your problems to people who matter. Not everyone will tell me your problems. Mm -hmm. And God will always send someone to get out of that space. Mm -hmm. I was in the market and a gentleman called me, uh, Sokoni came. He's called Charles. He has a psychology. He was my customer. Because me, I would say, customer, could you here? And I was so pretty. I have good English. Mm -hmm. And men, all men bought from me anyway. And women, market women didn't like me about. <laughs> and I tell women out here, <laughs> even in leadership, Stop hating young women because they are loved. Let them be loved. Mm -hmm. It is God's favor. Mm -hmm. Men loved me so much. Strangers loved. So women didn't like it. So they started insulting me. Why am I under office? 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 So you see, I could feel bad. But my mother would shield me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my mom by the way, died in a road crash in 2017. Mm -hmm. And my mother shaped who I am. Mm -hmm. Because she exposed me. Mm -hmm. And I tell parents, especially mothers, Teach your children what you do at a tender age. We'll not have all the evils we have in the society. Mm -hmm. I learned from my mother. Even today, the values that I have, the philanthropy thing, the mentorship I do, the, the, the can do I am. Mm -hmm. it, is my, it is a reflection of my mother. Mm -hmm. If my mother did not teach me business, I could maybe be a prostitute somewhere. Mm -hmm. I could be a someone's, some person, wife. Now I to sit and But my mother shaped my destiny. And by God's grace now, I went to, I cut the niche of education because I felt education will get me out yeah. of this. So yeah. I ventured into education. Mm -hmm. Everything I did was for my mother. It was not for the world. It was not for everyone because my mother would really cry. You are dad this, you are dad that. And I felt happy. Mm -hmm. And I told God, may I not be the person to make my mother cry. Of all the things, let me make her proud. So I was stopping class for my mother. But my mother would come and take the plates, take Pesa, have photos with me. I have the photos in the book. You would see my mother happy. Now people picture number. Number one. I'm the only girl who taught in our class. From me, Utapata Wengine Wakuko. And it was for my mother, not even for me. Because I wanted my mother to feel good. So that she doesn't feel, no wonder nini nilufkuzo na nini. And I wanted to disapprove the world. That being a woman is not, uh, it's not, how can I, which is the best English one to put? That being a woman, a woman it's is not, a human It's not a being. weakness. Exa it's not yeah. a weakness. Yeah. It is the only difference between us and men is our autonomy, yes. the boobs and the, the, the whatever. Yeah. That is the only difference between mm. us and men. Mm. And that is the narrative I want to drive today. Stop demeaning women because they are women. I feel a lot of pain up to now because of my father. Just because we are girls. And unfortunately, or fortunately, he died in 2019 as well. Mm -hmm. And he died having never met him. Oh, you didn't meet him. I didn't meet him. He was not interested to meet us. Neither was I interested to meet him. Mm -hmm. Because I was so busy trying to prove to the world that a girl can also make it. And that's why I taught in class. In market, I made the best sales. In school, I'm a woman of first. It was not for myself, but for my mother. But I felt I not make my mother proud if I don't go to school. Because we could see women coming to graduation for their children. And my mother would sit in. I was like, mommy, one day, you'll come for my graduation. And sure to God, it happened. And me even got married, thinking a man will change my life. And because of insecurities. During my mentorship post, uh, uh, sessions, I talked to girls and men differently with my own experiences. And how your childhood shapes your adulthood and your future. Because I, I was looking for security. You see the teen pregnancies you see today in this country. The early marriages. All these things you see, the mental health issues. It has everything to do with the household. It has nothing to do with the government. It has nothing to do with you media people. It has nothing to do with... Today. Parents are blaming people. It has everything to do in the household. You see, I got married at 18 because I was looking for security. So it is in the market where my destiny was carved by God. I went to school. I paid my own school fees. You see, it is in the market where I made money. And that one million, that you, is... You made it from the market? Yes. 
But I was doing so many things. You have to be so smart in this world. I would sell my potatoes, biashara imeinuka, nafanya kazi CK, napeleka vitu kwa serious board, nimetafuta katedu kwa general hospital, nimetramkia methodist, mautendi zote mindi wanapeleka. So what's the women? Don't, don't be the party. Don't wait to blame people. You know what you can where you want. Then the rest leave it to God. Are you on social media? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Irene Kendi on Facebook. Irene Kendi mama yao my page. I have an account and a page. Irene Kendi LinkedIn. At uh, Irene Mamre uh, Twitter. And Irene Kendi Mamre slash, slash Mamre on Instagram. On Instagram. Mm. All right. So you, in case you didn't... Uh, get the social media handles for Irene, you'll, you'll see them on the scroll. Let's mm. engage, let's ask the questions. Mm. Um, Irene is the founder of Mamre Foundation. Mm. She's a youth and gender expert, political strategist. She's also very passionate about girl, child, education and empowerment. And also she's an author of a book called Carving of a Firebrand, which we will talk about in the second part of this interview. We want to take a short break when we come back. We will have so much for you. Don't stay out. Back to her standards with me, Queen Tambori. This is that show. This is where we connect you directly to women you need to know in this country, uh, in our neighborhood, in the world, in the globe. And today we are really, really excited to have Mama Yao with us. Mama Yao is also known as Irene Kendi. She is the first deputy president of Sonu, the first female ever to be elected in that position since 1970. You run alongside uh, Babo 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 mm. So if that rings a bell, we have her here today. If you have any questions for her, do not hesitate to hit us up across all of all the socials at Katie and Home. I'm also available at Quintum Bori on the socials. You can uh, reach me on the Facebook fan page. It is also called Quintum Bori. Alternatively, you can hit our producer. She's called Grace Waweru. Specifically, to tell her about the stories that you want to hear on this show and the women you think need to be profiled on this show. Mama Yao, yes. Karibu Sana. Thank you. Um, listening to your story and, of course, your experiences rising from the marketplace to a firebrand, um, I am amazed by the fact that you're able to build yourself. But as I was listening to you, I, it brought to me uh, a picture of this person this young girl or young woman who is still looking for shoulders to climb on, who is still looking for godfathers, who is still looking for someone who can speak on their behalf, mm. what would you tell them? I'll tell, I'll tell them, whether women or men, that everyone's destiny is carved and preplanned by God. And God sends people to walk the journey with you. You don't even need to look for people. I have met all the top echelons I've mentioned, the likes of Professor Kindiki, Professor Lindki, Professor Kobia, Kina Brother Atoli. The likes. Later I met him when I was in the market. I was mobilizing for him when he was vying for MP. And he really, and his personal assistant called Kimathi. They would see I was so eloquent, I was so outspoken, yeah. and they would give me job to mobilize the market women. You see, I never looked for them. Do what you do so well that the world will know you, that the world will look for you. Today, as we speak, I'm doing what you call university tours. I have not called any university to say, invite me to speak to your students. People have read my book. Uh, people have seen me speak the way I'm speaking in India. And they'll be like, Irene, would like to mentor our daughter. What do you want? I say, I want to be paid. Others I do for free. Others I don't even show up. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because of my story, because of what I do for girls yeah. and the young people in this country, people look for me. Don't, don't go to look for people. Women, yes, they use shortcuts. Those shortcuts are short-lived. The godfathers will be there. Some will use you. Some will have their own interests. And others will want to help you shut for who you are in the society. You do what you do. Quinta, if you're a media personality the way you are, cover stories of women. And first of all, well done. I have not seen people cover stories of young women because they think young women have not 
reached there yet. I've done you two story for you two. You are doing mine, and I know you'll do for many young women. Every day I have a vision of where we want to go. I have a vision of becoming the first female president of this country. I don't know when, but it shall come to pass. As long as God gives me the gift of life, it shall come to pass. Have a vision. And ask yourself, how do I achieve this vision? Let pray to God and tell God, give me the people to work with me with this journey. Because if you want, to, if you want God to look for people, mm. yes, you look for people mm. and others come. But the, if you go looking for that, for that, for that, you end up in the pit. You end up collecting everybody. And they come and sink your ship. But when you do the right thing, the right time and the right place, for you, for community and for God, you will always have all. Mm. So I'll tell women and men, let God fathers look for you. I've seen the president look for me. Uh, the former president, Uru Kenyatta. I've seen him look for me. I've seen who is in this country and I'm beyond look for me. He works to me how I met Prince yes. Harry. When I went to London yes. to do my executive postgraduate course, which is an equivalent master's in Kenya, mm -hmm. I was given a chance to speak. First of all, I did a presentation of the initiatives the Kenyan government is doing for the young people in the Commonwealth. I did it so well. I was the only commoner. The rest were ministers. And I thank Professor Margaret Kobe and Manu Esipisu for giving me that chance. She believed in me. She would have sent Kina Shebesh. She could have sent Kina Ilachi, women who are under her at a senior position. Yeah. She believed in me and said, Kendi, I'm the one who is supposed to go for this course. Go. And I went confidently. And I did my best. And all along when I was doing my presentation, Prince Harry was. Because I said, these are a rare platform. Let me give it the best for myself, for my boss and for my country. Because I, re I was representing Kenya. Actually, East Africa. I was the only one. I was the only one from East Africa. I was doing it for my country. Just to do your best. And that is when Prince Harry came and told me, girl, you have so much energy. Mm. You are so eloquent. Can I hug you? I've never said why Prince hugged me, by the way. It's in my book. But he was moved by my speech. And I was introducing myself. I said, I'm the only commoner here. Just believe in young people. Because I'm in this platform at Marlboro House, by a mere fact that my boss, Professor Margaret and Manuel Sipisu, believed in me. They didn't know even what I was going to present. My presentation, I was doing it at, I presented my country so well. I branded Kenya so well. I brought out the initiatives of the government for the young people so well. And I can ask, even other ministers wanted to come to benchmark in Kenya. The Jamaican minister, Alando Teralonga, Teralong, was here. He, I hosted him in this house. The minister from Barbados, Madam Cynthia, was here. To ask me, Kendi, I want to know. Because when you are given an opportunity, shine for yourself, shine for your bosses, shine for your country, shine for who believes in you. The rest, leave it. Vitu zita jisot. That is what I will advise people. Imambi, you need connections. You will never get connections if there is nothing you are doing. Connections are brought by what you are doing. And do unique things that others are not doing. Today I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a product of my story. Story of resilience. Story of success at my age. People say you are not yet successful. Yes, I'm not. But 10 years ago I was selling in the market to my friends. Mm -hmm. Today I advise ministers in this country. It is an, it's a great achievement for me. I have taught young people the rules of the game. How to get out of an abusive marriage. How to find a way for yourself as a woman. How to package yourself as a woman. The art of integrity, honesty, and diplomacy. That is me. Courage. How do you... What, what is... And I educate young people in this country of the opportunities that are available in the country. If the opportunities are there today were there during my time, Quinta, I'd be a multimillionaire. Today I'll be owning my own charity institutions. I would be owning schools to educate the destitute. You see, I'm seeing people die of hunger yeah. and people are stuffing billions in account. What for? Mm -hmm. Today, if the opportunities in the government were there during my time, I'd be the one supplying food staffs in the starving areas. Because I will have made money. And even now that five, I would be I would be a multimillionaire. But still, despite everything, I was like a diversion to go to university, become a teacher. The the the, the the biggest possession I thought of was a principal and a great businesswoman. Because I wanted to be like the rich market women. 
and the principal. When in school, I'm still running the business. The business yeah. That was my dream. Mm. But God mm. had another destiny for me. Mm. God had a purpose for me. And God, the purpose he had for me was to teach women and young people of this country the rules of the game. And I tell people, you must suffer. Suffering prepares you for big things. So that you can also be kind to others. And so that you can know how to live with people. My suffering has elevated me. My suffering has made me understand the art of kindness and philanthropy. That is why I give. Because no one gave to me. Mm -hmm. I give money. I give food. I give clothes. I give myself. Because no one did that to me. And that is the life I want to live. Because I have been there. I know that it means sleeping hungry with a baby in school. I know what it means being bullied. I know what it means being rejected. I know what it means being a young survivor. I grew up too fast. I just finished going for my childhood trauma therapist just the other day. I never knew I was traumatized, but my experiences traumatized me. But I'm a old woman. And I tell women, if you feel you are broken, go for therapies and pray. And do the best that you can do. The rest leave to God. We will always make the life beautiful. Stop counting on Godfather. Stop counting on Sponsor, sponsors. sponsors and Stop counting on CG <laughs> Ward. You do your, if you are a farmer, yeah. farm so well, let your, let your shamba be a, people come to do benchmarking in your shamba. If you are a public speaker like me or a mentor, talk to people, give them experiences and whatever that everyone will say, call, invite Kelly. Today, I'm being vetted in all high schools and universities in this country. Now, the private institutions are inviting me to speak to their staff. I get paid. I never knew my story or the things I knew would give me money. And in those corridors, I meet ways. The other day I was in Rwanda, I met him. James Mungo, Patricia Scotland is my friend, the Commonwealth Secretary General. She's one woman who I admire so much. I have known people through my space. But above all, tell God to give you wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because even if he gives you the best talents, the best of looks, the best of offices, without wisdom and emotional intelligence, you will collapse. You will collapse. Mm -hmm. What does success look like for you? Do you feel like you're already there? Or do you still have you know, some miles to go? Are you, are you happy where you, with, what, with where you are and what you have? I'm happy, mm -hmm. but not contented. <laughs> I'm happy but not contented mm -hmm. because I feel I have just begun my journey. I've be just begun my journey and I know God has bigger things for me. From where God has brought me from to this place. I'm not successful. I'm not yet, yet but I'm happy. You're happy. I'm happy. You're getting there. I'm getting there. And yeah. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before, before I ask you a, a little bit about your book, Carving of a Firebrand, I'm very curious about the title. Um, there's something about uh, campus leadership and national politics. It kind of works like a springboard. Most uh, campus student leaders, somehow they find themselves elevated to national politics. But at the same time, getting onto that platform is such a big challenge for young women. Mm. Yes. So if there's that say fresher who has just walked mm. into campus and mm. they have a dream and a drive like you, mm. like you are now addressing the little, the, the fresher from one, mm. uh, sorry, fresher first year mm. university woman mm. who is really passionate about leadership, but they don't even know where to mm. start, who to talk to. Mm. They don't have the right connections. Mm. What would you tell them briefly? Then we can now talk about. What I'll tell brand. the freshers, especially the young ladies yeah. at the university, we cannot all be famous, but you're all great. And I tell people you are gifted differently. You cannot all be in student leadership. But if you are a singer at the university as a first year, look for singing clubs. Sing so well that the world will be like, we would like this girl to sing in open ceremonies in Unka, mm. the state house events. If you play like, if you run like Omanyala, yeah. run so well mm -hmm. that the entire world will be like, man, this girl can run. If you are a public speaker or a mentor or a political person like Irene Kendi, yeah. throw yourself into that space as if you are dying tomorrow. Do your thing. Don't be afraid of mistakes. Make mistakes. Those mistakes are the ones that have shaped me. Yeah. Even in my the first employment, formal employment was in Koto. I made so many mistakes. 
but brother Fra- papa we call him papa franco mm-hmm. brother francis had totally believed in me mm-hmm. he could tell me these are the worst mistake you can make in the trade union i'm like i'm sorry how do you want me to do it learn first years learn 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 you must be ready to know what is happening where and that was the difference between me and other first years i was so fast what is happening where and know in the university i started my hustle i realized there were no photographers me i went and bought a camera i'm a hustler remember i'm paying bay i'm paying bills you know i could not stay in campus with my baby i had to look for a rent, a rent house so i had to pay rent pay his school fees pay my school fees parallel degree i was paying my own school fees sasa kale ka million ni mesevu kule ka free nikicheza ka time because within one month nilioni the pesa imepungua imefika karibu 700 kukula mandazi kufanya nini paying school fees paying bills mtoto amegoncheka i realized sita mandiza shule so i looked at the challenges you know today there are so many challenges like now there's the climate change issue whoever comes with a solution for this hunger in this country will be an overnight multimillionaire so i realized in school people don't, no one has a camera so i ran to luduli and but i didn't even know luduli i remember i remember i asked some guy called solo and he's one who referred me to a guy called what was the name of this gentleman he's one who took me to luduli i bought a compact sony camera worth 12000 i would come quinta you know i'm so confident and take you a photo when your boyfriend comes i take you a photo when your girlfriend comes i take you a photo when your parents are around i take you a photo i used to go to sivanis there's a there's a there's a studio there yes. one photo to print used to cost me seven shillings and used to pay that people so after class i would run there and and that's how i connect and too fast with all the students in campus now nikao tengeneza biashara to other campus i used to make 2000 shillings per day mwasera akienda ndunda na kupika washeres juu wapi unajua mimi niko na mtoto na sina ment mtoto nikakuwa strategic there is a school called great vision it has a boarding facility akimaliza shule saa 10 napigia mwalimu naambia kaweke kwa boarder za mkami i'll show up at 8 because after class at 4 i have to rush to town na ni picha zikiosha naenda hapo dubois nanua earrings nanua to vest nanua to panty na kikongo nikupatia picha na kwambia sunua ka earring nunua ka sunua na made a lot of money and that is when i came to nikakuja ku interact na so many so many people because i was being door to door and they said kende you are so good and courageous we want to elect you and that is how i was by the way i was the first female mayor in kikuyu campus in 2012 i was elected as a mayor na haso si kutumia hapa ndru kwa hiyo campaign posta ya dhiri posters moja kaikwa kimbale ingine ikaikwa mph ingine ikaikwa mali kulikuwa kunaitwa yard and i am much the overall best when i was in first year and that is when i became so prominent i realized that the leadership skill in me also let listen to people what they say you are made of because me, i didn't know i was a leader i didn't know i had that yeah, had because sasa umemaliza na high school na huko kwa soko i thought it me until now people started shaping it and it is my fellow comrades imagine senior students in my class who shaped my who, who yeah. and packaged me and taught me how to speak on media the man one decade on four came to cover hata kizungu ilikuwa kizungu mkuti because i've just come from the market kizungu wa ingiani so my student my my friends would tell me when next time minda is addressing you Wear my shoes. Chana nyole hivi had a kimen hair. Ka makeup. That's when I knew about makeup. I didn't know about makeup. Me kwa kienyeji tu. And you do your thing. Let the world see you. Let God send people to pack and you the way send people to package me. I never looked for Bab, which is Babu looked for me. I used to hear Bab. I used to and I used to see him on newspapers and and Bab looked for me. I I didn't take one. And he bought me very nice food. And I was like, I mm. And do something with your life mm. and the world will see you. And mm. I tell first years, if you are a dancer, dance so well. There are people who are hiring dancers mm. every day. There are people who want private dancers every day then internationally. You do your thing. Let the world catch up. But you must do something. You go to class, you're not even interacting with others. Mm. You don't know whose father is his classmate. Mm. You know those days I was not even very good at networking because if I was good at networking my first year second year kuna mali nilishindwa elections because I was rigged out because I could not afford that 
if I knew the things I know today, at a baba ngi ngi chukwati a baba chiyama. But I didn't have info. Information is power. Mm -hmm. And I also, it's information that all happy says, you know, not the challenge. Yeah. I have to go home, wash, do the household chores, and take care of the baby. That is the difference between me and others. But you see, still I rose. Mm -hmm. If you read my book, the it's last the, the, the last page, mm -hmm. it's my Angelo poem, Still I Rise. Still. I tell young people, do something. You do something and do it so well. Mm -hmm. And make money out of it so that you don't beg mm. and so that you don't bleed on others mm. make even little money and don't be in a hurry to get rich but if i stay as well in university remember must get a degree mm -hmm. of all the things i did i was so careful of what brought me to school a degree but at the same time the university there's a lot of time free time but people go into crimes whatever bad things utilize that time to build yourself to build yourself and you see professor kimbiki spotted me Professor, bro, I told I never go look for a job from him. He saw me speak on TV and said, this one can be a very good trade unionist. I met Kidiki in set house. To come here, to come here, I was like, he laughed. And I mean, I'm not ashamed of yeah. telling people. If I meet you, Quinta, I'm like, Quinta, it is beautiful. And I can add another one. Yeah. Can I bring it to you tomorrow? Yeah. So when I come, I say my problems. When I met Prof, I told him, Prof, I think I can. I'm a very good mobilizer. I can help the programs you have in your, when he was the lead of majority yeah. in the Senate. Mm. I told him, you have programs in your office for youth. Mm. I can do it so well in, in the grassroots and across the universities. Mm. So I really said, yeah, can I trust you? Yes. I did it. And I bought my first degree when I was still a student. Because he paid me well. Mm. And he believed in me. Mm. He believed in me, trusted me, and I was reliable. And today is a minister for interior. So if people see me working in interior, <laughs> but I say, hey, Nicole, I'm a we have a history. You understand? The door is a minister for agriculture. Yeah. He's the man who appointed me in a board yeah. when I was barely 21 years. Yeah. And he's the one who taught me how to interact with these people. When I was still in the... Me, I met in a Uru in 205 when I was still a student. Mm. And it is the who gave me that platform. Mm. You see, mm. even young people were given a platform. Show the world what you are made. You show the world mm -hmm. your capacity. Mm -hmm. You never know. Never so today, know. this point, this space, and when I was buying it, so you need money. When I realized it is an affair, money affair, I go look for money from Professor Mangrate, Kinakibure, Kidiki. They gave me money. Actually, on Rabolentori back road, all my campaigns in the university. He's a man who believed in me since when I was in the market up today. Mm -hmm. So if I go to work in his office even without money, I'll deliver yeah. because I know where you this you guy got me from. Mm -hmm. So I tell young people, these connections will yeah. do for you. Well, I find you like it on a mm -hmm. as long as it is not against the uh, law. So as long as it is legal. As long as it is yeah. legal. Yeah, yeah. The power of connections, mm -hmm. I tell you. Now, you have a book here. I see mm -hmm. our time is running out. Mm -hmm. You have a book here. All, this in, all these stories, mm -hmm. Ziko Yeah, it's in this book. Where can we find the book? You can find the book in Nuria stores. Uh -huh. You can also order directly from me. You can get it in UNES Bookstore, Universal of Nairobi. As we speak, this book is in uh, American Library Congress. Mm, what do you say? Mambo ya mungu too. <laughs> they saw my story yeah. and they were like, this, uh, this story can dream me because of the mental health. You know, after I lost my mom, I sank into depression. Yeah. So I have shared my story of how I came out of the depression. Mm. And you see today in this world, this mental health thing is, is a menace it across is, the world. So when someone read my book, the last part, mm how I battled depression for four years and how I got out of it. They were like, if this girl, this story, she has come from this and she has got out of it, we can share it with our, with our, with our young, people young people and even the, 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 the it's a cast across the generation yeah. in America. Yeah. So they ordered. My book is also delivered across the world. It yeah. has, Imetembe, huh? Imetembe, yeah. And I thank God. So in, very, in one very short minute, how do you carve have a firebrand yeah a carving of a firebrand yeah. you see from the market to the firebrand that i am <laughs> and the, it's the one who wrote uh, the, the one who helped me come up with this book yeah brian abuta ogeto yeah. is the one who came up with the topic oh. shockingly mm. in 2015 mm. professor kindik was introduced he was introducing me to the director of kenya school of law by pen yeah and he said i have seen this girl professor kindik tells him this girl has a firebrand. Oh, that was before the book. Before the book. And now, the person who came up with this topic, I'm not told in this story. So when I saw the carving of a firebrand, because I'm a firebrand anyway, and there's only one firebrand in this country, <laughs> I didn't came. The rest are, I'm trying 
I'm trying to bring to fire brands to Inky so that we can be many and drive the agenda of this nation. Yeah. So it's a nice book. It's a it's a it's an, an amazing book. It's an amazing book. It's an amazing book. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, Firebrand. <laughs> Irene Kendi, the only firebrand in this country. Thank you so much for being on her standards. I think we have to end the show right Thank now. Thank you. Thank you. It's so been amazing. Much. Thank you. Thank you for inspiring us, Thank inspiring you. young people in campus, inspiring the generation. And uh, of course, if you are just joining us today, we were in the company of the amazing Irene Kendi. Irene Kendi is a, gen, a, a, a human rights advocate. She's very enthusiastic about girl child empowerment, education. She Kahama is a, she, she exactly, is. she's a political strategist. She's also a published author of this book that I'm holding right here. This has been really great. Thank you for keeping us company. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, comments, you want to you know catch up with us we are available on across all socials at ktn home you can also hit me up at quinton Bory on facebook instagram twitter there's a fan page on facebook uh called quinton Bory. you can also talk to our director she's called gracie waweru gracie waweru is the boss lady so if you have any woman or a topic that you want us to discuss she is the right person to mm -hmm. talk to and of course there are other people behind the scenes who you're not able to see uh, Kibet, Imani, Asante Nisana. Uh, thank you so much for you know working behind the scene and making this production a successful. And until next time, from us, it's always bye. Catch up with all our late, our past episodes of Her Standards on our YouTube channel. Bye for now.